Hi, this is Mike with OPST. Um, in the past, we've done tying kits. Uh, we're bringing those back out, some newer patterns. Um, we brought one out here right before Christmas, which is the Umami kit, the James Mullard's Fly. Really cool pattern. He's got videos on how to tie that. We have multiple colors of this available, and you get the whole kit, everything you need to tie it. And today we're looking at Dave Pinchowski's Carpet Spider. So another really cool fly. We saw this in action last winter during steelhead season and this fly outperformed consistently. The thing has tons of movement. It's actually pretty easy to tie and, and it's just a good pattern. With the kit, it comes like this. So you can see there's multiple colors of material. So what that does is you can put it together three different ways, four different ways, however you want. Just change the pattern, change the color, and you have multiple flies out of one kit. Or if you like the one color, you can stack them up and, and just have a bunch of them. But it gives you a lot of options. And we're gonna show you that today on how to tie that and get into detail on that. Hi, this is Mike with OPSD. Today we're gonna be tying Dave Pinchowski's Carpet Spider. We have these new kits, everything you need to tie with them. The first thing you grab is the tube. You need a, a tube adapter, a tube ply vise, something to put the tube on. This is a little needle, a tube needle, so it's super easy. Here you'll just slide it down and it, it's tapered so it'll it'll wedge in. With these tubes, they're gonna come three times this long, just cut them into thirds. That's the general pattern. You can cut them any size you want, but Dave and, and I, and, and I've, since I'm copying what he does, is, is, is just cut them in thirds, it makes it easy. And you'll start with there. The first step with this is, you know, then you get your thread started. Give yourself some, some gap here. Don't tie all the way to the back. This gives you two two things. It just gives you room, and then if you want to heat up the back and melt it, or you want to put a junction tubing on the back, you give yourself enough room to do that. The first step will be a dubbing ball right here, so it's going to overlap a little bit. But start your thread, make your dubbing loop. The guys that have watched, they've done composite loops. It's, it's the same kind of thing, but you're just simplifying. It's a dubbing loop. We're still going to use our dubbing spinner. Then you're just going to grab dubbing, pull it out, shorten it up, pull it together. Just keep, don't just pull it out of the package and not mess with it. This will, this will break it up. This will, will clean it up and then you'll stretch it out basically just to put it in your loop. You can wax your loops. Um, if I'm doing this all the time, I'm going to wax my loops. I forgot my wax today. It's not the end of the world. Put it in your loop spin your dubbing twister, let it do the work. It'll spin your material up, give a couple good cranks, put it in there tight. Next thing you do is you're gonna brush out your dubbing. Um, this is a straight toothbrush. You can, you can buy brushes that are made for doing this or you can go to the store and just buy a toothbrush. It, it works great. Just gonna pick out the material, make it stand up, work it around all the sides and get those loose fibers out and get the, the fibers that are pinched down to open up and stand up, get to here. Next thing you can do is if you want, there's like we do with the composite loop, you can get it wet and then apply it. Again, this is, this is just dubbing. So you can pull it to one side and just start wrapping it. When you get it on here, just keep pulling it back. Like you would do your composite loop, stack loops next to each other. You don't have to overlap. And what this, what you're doing with this dubbing ball here is you're just giving it some, some body. So this aquifer is soft material, so it moves really well, but this ball will help just prop it up. Basically it's, it's a prop point. So get it like that. Again, you're going to make sure nothing's stuck on itself, brush it out. And if you look right here, I'll push, push this all back. You still have your tube sticking out the back. Like I said, if you want to do junction tubing, um, Dave actually will, will take this fly and flip it over once in a while and flip it in reverse because the material will all lay back. This gives you the room to do that. So like I said, just leave yourself a little bit of space there and then you'll start, got your dubbing loop, then you're gonna start with your materials. So we'll start with white here first this is this is aquifer it's another type of craft fur the this stuff's really long it's really nice it's got good flow this is what we all tend to prefer we you know there's there's craft fur available all over extra select craft fur these colors and that that they do in aquifer is 
it's just they're just really nice colors and for fishing wise these are built and died for fishing so uh, we've been really happy with them what i'll do here is they're pretty long you're going to cut cut to the length you want cut the big chunk off the aquifer pile and then guess your length decide what you want there's no right or wrong answer you know you can get them really long and then basically you're just going to stick this over the front of the tube and then you're going to take your thread and do two loose wraps trying to catch as much of that fiber as you can this will make a mess there's there's you're not going to catch them all do a couple more tight wraps just like i just did and then you're going to take this and pull it back just work on it like this and then move your thread in front of it and that's your first stack doesn't look like much as you can see probably more than a third of the material falls off it's it's just what it does it's no big deal don't don't panic that you're doing it wrong because it does that it's just part of this material is loose even when you as you can see when I, i'm grabbing it here it's it falls out too cut yourself another chunk and all you're going to do is layer this fly so you don't want you don't have to do huge chunks if you want to think you're going to do a big fly this is it's all about layering it's not about putting a whole pile on at one time it's putting small to medium piles on and again i got it here i'm gonna pull this back i'm gonna stick this over the tube go to here with my left hand i'm gonna wrap, wrap two loose wraps while i'm still holding the material i'm gonna let it go you can see it's pretty locked in i'm gonna do a couple tight wraps do three on that one and then i'm just gonna pull it all back again you can if you got your water with you that you're wetting you can wet this down right here too and it'll help with the the static and keep it back but if you manipulate it it'll it'll start acting right anyway again lots of lots of waste here lots of extra material that's that's perfectly normal it's not it's not that you're tying the fly wrong so i got two stacks there it's a little bit thin still so i'm gonna do one more and then we'll switch colors here but same thing get about the length you want again i'm gonna trim about that much off Turn it over and then go frontward forward. And I'm gonna do my two wraps right here to lock it down. Sometimes you can spin it around if you don't like where it lays, manipulate a little bit before you get it tight and tighten it down. And then again, pull everything back, lay your thread wraps right in front of it. And those, those thread wraps will help stack it. So now I got some body, like you can see, there's, there's lots of extra material. This is, you probably don't want to do this when you're when your wife's cooking dinner or something like that. She's not gonna be real happy with you as if you're doing it in the kitchen or, or something like that because it is messy. So I'm gonna go to the next step. I'm gonna start and change colors, and I'm gonna add pink to it. It's exactly the same steps. Grab a chunk of pink, cut it off, and these all vary. So these say I want, eh, I don't want like this. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna cut this much off. So I'm gonna cut. About a half inch off of that again i'm using you can use a bigger chunk than this you can it's just about stacking them um, get that on there like that a couple loose wraps try to catch your materials the one thing that dave has that i don't have here today is he will actually has a little tool that he gets to this point and he'll compress them and you can do this with your fingers this tool is cool because it, it just goes over the top and and will push them tight like you're stacking deer hair type of the idea if you've done that before it works out like this just just keep doing it like that and, but if you can if you want it if you want it thicker and, and more packed in you can you can compress it with a pin or like i said the same type of way that you stack deer hair and, and press it together i'm gonna go on to my second group okay again adjust my length Shake off the extra. Get my coverage, do my loose wraps. See the first wrap missed a few, second wrap will catch it up. Then you get a couple tight wraps, tighten it down. And I'm gonna take everything and 
push it back again, stack it in front. So here, you basically got a fly right here. So if you wanted a pink and white, you could stop there or you could add more material and make it bulkier, make it thinner, however you want. So that's one version of a fly, or you can dress it up. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna add some flash in between these layers. So the flash that we got that comes with it, get you know three, four, five fibers. There's no, there's no right or wrong to how much flash you put into a fly, and, and and some people want a lot, some people want a little. You have that option. This is a crinkle flash, so it's got a little bit of like uh, depth to the flash. It's got a little, basically little crinkles in it, which actually look like fish scales, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna lay it out here on this side, get about what I want on here. I'm just gonna wrap it in on the side facing me. And then I got this extra material over here. I'm just gonna spin that like so, and then wrap it in. So you don't have to cut multiple times. You can literally get it on both sides with one longer piece. And you can come in here and trim these up real easy. So there's a little bit of flash. You can see it's, it's unruly as soon as you stack more materials on it. So I recommend, even if you were gonna do the pink and white, before you did that last layer of pink, add a little bit of flash if that's what you want. Um, this other material we got here is pretty cool. That, that gives it kind of a barred look. So this is a point where if you had saddle hackles and you wanted to put a colored saddle hackle on, great. But saddles are hard to come by now used to be super easy and, and as you know girls put it in their hair and, and actually Steven Tyler started that and getting hackles has never been the same since but this stuff works pretty good I'm actually pretty impressed with it it gives you it gives you that barred look in your fly and if you got some that are more crinkly than you want cut them out but that's pretty cool there like I said it gives it some character now I'm gonna go to my next color. So I have my orange here. It's all the same steps. Grab a chunk. Cut it, kind of line it up. You know, hey, we're, I don't want to be that long like I did with the rest of them. I'm gonna cut about that much off. If you got bigger scissors, these are pretty small scissors. You can, a lot of times if you have synthetic scissors, it'll cut it in one whack, but it's not a, it's not a big deal, just do what I did, cut it multiple times. Again, push it on, do your first loose wrap. Like I said, you can see it misses. Your second wrap will usually come clean up most of that. And that one missed a little bit there, so I'm gonna do a third one. And a couple tight ones. And then again, just push everything backwards. And basically you're tying everything in reverse, so it's making that aquifer stand up. And like this one's, you know, okay, I want too, too much stand on like that. Well, that's not your last piece. So if you're in the middle of a fly and it's standing like that, it's not a big deal. Again, just grab your next layer, cut another chunk off of more oranges what you're going to do anyway. And again, come up and kind of measure it, cut your cut to length. Did a little thicker piece here. Like I said, it's you can vary that. This is a little bigger one I did intentionally because this will be my last wrap. Two wraps and break my thread. So that's not good. I can save the fly. I'm gonna do just two more wraps to hold it there for a minute and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working through this because this is this happens and on your vice I know you guys that tie all the time it, it happens you break your thread most bobbins are super easy the one that I am tying with I can't find my bobbin threader so I got a little bit of our mono like I said this one's a little more of a pain to thread and it definitely needs a a threader. So we're here to save this fly now. So re-threaded my bobbin. I have my 
thread here. I'm just gonna grab that thread and I'll line this one up and wrap over the top of it. So you've created a, basically you've created a knot again that keeps that one from unthreading and holds your bobbin back in place and, and you've saved the fly. It's got a little more thread than you want, not a big deal. So again, push everything this way Gonna weave that last one through there like so. Like I said, when you pull it out like this, it'll start laying itself out. You can you can manipulate this stuff. And that's close, but I'm gonna do one more small wrap here and clean it up just a little bit more since I broke my thread on that one. And like I said, I don't mind showing that because you break thread it's not it's 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 super common to do and can't let it destroy your whole fly because you broke you broke your thread it just it's just a, a hiccup in the middle of time that last one pull that pull that hair through and kind of work your thread through there so you don't get any caught up on it and then you can see there's your fly and you can see how everything lays back and profiles so your fly is done at this point so whip finish tool fly tires best friend if you don't have one of these or you don't use it I highly recommend that you get one get the Mattarelli style it's the easiest to learn on works great and if you're tying flies to go fish, that knot holds really, really well. So you can put glue on it, or if you're just cranking out flies to go, you're good. But that's the carpet spider. And like I said, there's many different color variations. This pack here will get you enough that you can reverse three colors, so you can make a whole different color combination than this. But like I said, it's pretty easy to tie. It, there's no right or wrong way. What you'll do with this very end here is, is when you take it off, you're gonna cut, leave yourself a little bit in the front here, but cut it off right here. And I can show you that. So you don't need all that extra, it's just extra. Leave yourself some, don't, don't cut it right at the threads. Just leave yourself a chunk like so. And if you want, you can take a lighter real quick and it'll actually kind of boil up on it and curl do it or not it's not it's not going to change the fly much but there it is